let's just talk a little bit about the proper heel position because this is and and we're not when look at a a equals neutral that should be your starting point your anchor point for any of you that shoot a shotgun when you mount the shotgun you need to mount it in the same place every time your ability to interpret where that dog is looking and to accurately direct them to a destination is not much different than raising and pointing a shotgun, throwing a baseball, shooting a basketball. It has to start with a consistency in the way you mount the gun, or in this case, heal your dog. So I've got position B, because that's the handler option. Position B is that closing the door or pushing position. You start at A, that's where they come in, they've delivered the bird, or that's where you're watching, but position B is that position where you will step ahead and you create an influence away from the handler. In this instance, with the dog being on the left, you would influence the dog to the left. Now, position C is an option that the handler can choose, not the dog. If the dog chooses to be, have you in position C, that's probably because he wants to step ahead of you and take charge of the situation. I want them to default to A, that's number one. If you elect to step back to the C position, which would be opening the door and influencing the dog to the right, that's appropriate at times, but it all starts with position A. Okay, here's another view, an overhead view. The neutral position, the handler is at the shoulder. Handler's feet are pretty square. I know a lot of you are saying, I can't tell where their spine is if I'm there. I wanna be further back. Well. You know what? It takes some practice. I get it. But in this instance, if you look at the base of the tail to middle of the shoulder blades to the tip of the nose, for the most part, they're all in alignment. You're going to hear me say A-S-H-E. Attitude, spine, head, eyes. I know Dennis is going to tell me it's spine, head, eyes, attitude. We're not getting going there yet, but we are going to talk about the S, spine, head, and eyes. Starts with that neutral position. In this, everything's in sync. That's the way I want to start. So I've combined the 360 degree healing drill and the silent command system because I kind of think they go together. So what you're going to see here is a handler working on a basic 360 degree healing drill using a mat. He's working on heel, rotating him counterclockwise. Does that for a minute, stops. Gets him set up straight, now starts working on the pull. Now he's working on the left. If you have a two-sided dog, you're going to want to do this on both sides. Now, this happens to be an older dog who's gotten a little bit sloppy, so you can see there's some room for attention here on these line mechanics because that pulling and pushing are valuable things to maintain. So how do you work on that? Well, our handler here is using a Wonder Lead, a little pinch collar style lead, and she's working on healing and mostly in a silent command system. She rotates, she has told the dog to heal, and the dog's responsibility is to stay in that position and be very aware of the handler movement, backing up here in this instance, and pulling a little bit, rotating. And again, you've got to coach them through this part. You've got to teach them how to do it, and then you've got to make them do it under all circumstances. You notice she's not saying a word. She's already said heal. She's identified what the dog's job is. And what this really does for her is that this is a way to use, we call it a silent command. It, what you can do when the, once from the time you signal the judge, on, from the time you signal the judge until you get your number, you can't talk to him, correct? But you can do this. So. If you're able to talk to him without talking to him, 
you can actually communicate to move left, move right, back up, and you can, but if you tap your leg, you get thrown out. If you say here, you could get thrown out. But she is doing all of, the, she's giving all those commands. Now she's using the wonder lead to reinforce it, but now this dog becomes very sensitive to where heel is and to sit her butt down when she stops and to rotate clockwise, she's executing a 360 healing drill here. The dog is real conscious of where heel is. And so she pulls and then, then she can go the other way. She can go, see? She becomes almost part of her body. And that's the ideal thing. So that, that's, that's really good. There's, I mean, a great thing to do is a little exercise before you go to line. Sure, I mean, they become hyper aware of your movement and they're real conscious to stay where they belong. And you give them a little, and you know, the reason that Wonder Lead's nice is because it's springy. So when you, when you apply pressure, it happens. And the minute you take off pressure, it releases. So it's like a pinch collar. It's a different version of a pinch collar. But I found it to be a pretty effective. It makes a little bit of a rattling noise. And um, it's, just, it's just a good way to do it. That was nice. Okay, good, Nancy. So this handler's coming out of the blind, getting ready to go to line. But we've decided to do a little bit of that silent command stuff. Now, this dog's anticipating going to get marks. But she rotates away from the line. You notice how the dog does not want to leave the view of the field. So she probably uses a little bit of low-level pressure there. She spins around the holding blind, re-enters the holding blind, comes out again. Once again, we're gonna we're gonna make this dog kind of stay in heel and just really do an obedience exercise. Now he seems to get the idea. Look at she stops, she backs up. Now he knows where heel is. Beautiful. That's, that's the way it's supposed to be. But it took a little bit of persuading to get him to be aware of where that position is and what his role is. So he, he just ran his second derby last weekend, which he won. But his line manner started to get bad. So we're going to kind of revisit what the rules are. So this handler gets all the way to the mat feels a little bit of resistance and says, you know, this would be a great time to enforce a 360 healing drill. So she's got to work at it a little bit. This dog doesn't want to move. So she backs up. She makes him yield on the mat. You can't do enough of this sometimes, especially with some of those high-powered, a little bit headstrong dogs that don't always like to be team players. So she's going to continue that full rotation. They don't like to look away from the field, especially when they see gunners or anticipating marks. So that move right there is a lot harder than it looks. So many of my best training situations arose unplanned. In our previous videos, a couple of those healing exercises were what we intended to do from the start. But a couple others were dictated by the dog's behavior. You know, it's very easy to get caught into the trap of wanting to do the test, but not paying attention to what's happening in the moment. Two of those handlers kind of felt resistance from their dogs and thought that, you know what, maybe the best thing I can do is focus on line mechanics. I couldn't agree more.